Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefine Horizons. Doing another training video today. We're going to talk about right away and how you can tell if a, if a right away is held in fee or as an easement. Okay, if you haven't watched my video yet that talks about what fee simple ownership of real estate is, I encourage you to go watch that before you watch this video. I'll try and remember to put a link in the description. Okay, so if you have right away for a road or a canal or a pipeline or a communication communication line, some type of utility, uh, this question will come up. And if you're a land surveyor, you need to know how to answer this question. You need to know why this question is important. So, and, and the question is that the right away, is it held in fee or as an easement? So I want to explain how you can attempt to answer that question if you are a land surveyor. And then I want to talk a little bit about why it becomes important. I'm going to give you a couple examples that show why it's important. I have one example that came up on a project here recently, the last few months, and then I've got an example from a few years ago that we'll talk about. So if you have a right away, anytime you're doing a boundary survey, and certainly anytime you're doing a land title survey or an ALTA survey, you need as a land surveyor to understand whether the right away on or adjacent to the property is held as a fee or an easement. So how do you determine that? Well, you need to ask you need to ask three questions. Okay. So the first question you need to ask is how was the right of way created? Okay, and there's there's two or three ways you can do that. <clears throat> so one is it, the right of way could be created by deed. So that's when um, somebody deeds somebody the right of way. Okay, so by deed, it can be dedicated on a map. So in California, that would be a parcel map or what we call a subdivision map, minor subdivision or a major subdivision. Okay. So in that case, there is no deed. The right of way is dedicated on the map. Okay. So um, that's the first question. Now, just kind of as an aside, you can also have right of way that is uh, that be that becomes a right of way through what we call prescriptive use. So it's a prescriptive easement. A lot of the rural road right of way in my part of California is actually held by the county as a prescriptive easement. That's a little bit different. It's kind of a different topic, but that's something that you have to be aware of. So. If you have a road that's improved on the ground and maintained by the public agency, but there is no dedication either by deed or by map, it could be held as a prescriptive easement. Okay, so you want to find, figure out how was the right of way created? Okay, what language was used on the deed or map that created the right of way? Okay, it's that language is important. So here's what happens a lot of times, and this is what causes confusion. The deed will just say a right of way for road purposes or uh, uh, we grant you this 40 foot right of way or on the map, it'll say, um, you know, uh, pipeline right away, 30 feet. Okay. And so in some of those cases, it, it becomes unclear. Okay. So what you want to look at when you're examining the language on the deed, you want to look at a couple things. First of all, if you see the word grant and convey or grant that tends to, um, that tends to provide evidence that the conveyance was in fee, not as an easement. If you see the word grant. Okay, I don't want to give, the, give you that as a hard and fast rule because the contrary can be shown. But at least in California, if you see the word grant, that tends to give evidence that, that the conveyance was meant to be a fee. Okay, <clears throat> If in the document you don't see the word grant and it seems as though the easement is uh, the right of way is being limited to a particular use or you see the word easement in the conveyance or on the map, um, then that, that's going to be evidence that the right-of-way is held as an easement, not as a fee. So you have to look at the actual language that was used on the deed or the map. Okay, And then for those cases that aren't clear, you have to understand what the rules are in your state. So we have in the law what we call a presumption. A presumption means we're going to assume this thing or presume, we're going to presume this thing is true unless the contrary can be shown by the evidence. Okay, So in, in my state, in California... If it's unclear whether or not a right of way was granted as a fee or an easement, in California, the legal presumption is that the conveyance was as an easement and not as a fee. Okay, now other states have the opposite rule. So in other states, if it's unclear, the presumption is that the conveyance was as a fee. Now, you can't just go by that rule because that rule is for when it's unclear, right? You still have to look, figure out how was the right of way created and what was the language used on the deed or the map. Okay, then only in unclear cases do you fall back on the rules, the rule for your state about whether or not the presumption is a, is a fee or an easement. Okay, so let's talk about why this matters. 
Let me get the right color marker here. Okay, so I want to give you an example that came up in my shop a few months ago. So we had a, a project. It didn't look exactly like this, but it looked something like this. And there was an existing, oh, let's say 60-foot road right away. This, was a, uh, this is on the edge of a city, so it's actually in the city. Okay. It was in the city limits. But the road, when the road was dedicated, this road was in the county. Okay, when it was dedicated. And in, in my part of California, as a general rule, most cities hold their right-of-way as in fee, and most counties hold their right-of-way in easements, although there, there are differences. So like in my hometown, Stockton, uh, they don't like to hold right-of-way in fee. They like to hold right-of-way as an easement. But So what happened is we had this property. Okay, Now, when the county came in and, and took the 60-foot right-of-way, this right-of-way was taken as an easement. So the actual property line went out to the center of the county road. Okay, so if you were gonna if you were gonna show a dark line around, let's say, a subdivision, okay, you would actually show the ownership of the property going to the center line. Okay, because the road is held as an easement. And you would show the gross area of the parcel would run to the center line of the road, not to this red line. Okay, because this is held as a fee, the county road is held as a fee. Your property line is actually out in the middle of the road. Okay, so that was the case here. This 60-foot road was dedicated to the county as an easement. Okay, so 30 feet on my client's property. Okay, now we were going in to prepare a subdivision map for this. And the county came in. I mean, the city. Now we're in the city. We got annexed into the city limits. And the city comes in and says, hey, we want to take another 15 feet because we're going to widen this road. You guys are going to develop. They're going to put houses in here. We're going to widen this road, so you have to give us another 15 feet of right-of-way. We said, okay, no problem. And they said, by the way, we want that as a fee. We want it in fee. We want a fee dedication of that 15-foot strip. So I got to talking to the city surveyor, and we realized that was going to create a problem. Because if they take this area, I'm cross-hatching here in green, in fee... Okay, what we end up with is we end up with a severed strip here. We have a 30-foot severed strip, right? So my client would end up owning this in fee and this 30-foot strip in fee, but there'd be this 15-foot strip that they didn't get to own in fee. Okay, so I told the city surveyor and the, and the engineer, I said, hey, we've only got two choices here. We, we can't do this. I said, you've got two choices. I said, you either take this 15 feet as an easement and we leave the property line in the center of the road, or my client has to quick claim you what's in the 30 feet. Quick claim that to the city. So if, if we do that, now the new property line, get my purple pin, if we quick claim this 30 feet to the city and we dedicate this 15 feet in fee, now the new property line is going to be right here, not the center of the road, it'll be here. The gross area will be here. So in this case, whether or not this 30-foot strip was held as a fee or an easement really mattered. That was going to change how we dedicated the 15 feet. Okay, And ultimately, my client didn't care. They didn't care if they gave this away as a fee or an easement. Okay, But what my client didn't want is they didn't want to get stuck owning this 30-foot strip under the road that they had no control over. Right? So what we ended up doing... The city ended up, they didn't want to take a quick claim for this 30 feet, so we ended up just taking, they took the 15 feet as an easement. So now I have a 45 foot easement over the north half of this parcel. Now, personally, I don't think we should let public agencies take road right away as an easement because in essence, there's very little the landowner can do with the property underneath the road. So I think it would be better if we just required agencies to take roads and fee, but that's not, I don't get to make the rules. So, so that's one example. <clears throat> Let me give you another example from a few years ago why this can be important. Okay, and this was actually done by another survey company I know. I'm actually friends, friends with this. The surveyor that, that was there at the time works at a different company now, but it, he's, a, he's a friend of mine. And this just this came up. I've seen it happen a lot. Okay, so there was a parcel. Okay, like this. And <clears throat> he went in and subdivided this parcel. Okay. And the, the city wanted some road here. So 
he dedicate he they, they they were going to dedicate this right away on their subdivision map. Okay, and then they came in and they subdivided this into three parcels, so parcel one, parcel two, and parcel three. Okay, this was the road. This was actually the name was Sperry Road. Okay. Okay, so far doesn't seem like we got any problems, right? Okay, now I come in, I don't know, 15 years after this guy does this original subdivision map, and the city's going to widen Sperry Road, and so they want me to come in, and we are going to kind of straighten this out. It was like a diagonal. We're going to come in and straighten it out. They wanted me to come in and take this area I'm cross-hatching and paint. Okay. Now, I told you before, my city, Stockton, they always take as an easement, so they wanted me to write an easement for this. Okay, for this area. Okay, but here's the problem that I ran into. On this guy's subdivision map, he actually has a note that said that this area here was dedicated to, dedicated as an easement. It said that on the map, right away dedicated as an easement. Okay, what I didn't know, if that's true, if this is an easement, that, who owns the area underneath? Was it owned by the original subdivider or was it owned by the owners of lots one, two, and three? And if it was owned by the owners of lots one, two, and three, how did the line connect? Okay, so let me get a different color here. I didn't know. There was two choices. I could extend the line like this. Okay, so I could run an extension to that original property line. Okay, or I could come in here and go perpendicular to the right of way. Okay, so there was two or three different ways I could do that, and I didn't know. That now the problem here is when this, as soon as this surveyor said that he was going to dedicate this area in his ease, as an easement, he should have shown the fee property lines running out to the center of the road. Okay, to the original property line. Okay, but he didn't. So this is just this happened because somebody wasn't clear about the difference between a right of way held in fee and a right of way held as an easement. So it's important. It's important. You need to know this. Okay, there's actually a, a um, there was a program to convert abandoned railroad right away into trails. It was called called the Rails to Trails program. I think it might still exist, and uh, it, it ran all over the country. And so uh, a lot of a lot of those projects, those Rail to Trails projects, ended up uh, there ended up being lawsuits that went to a lot of the state supreme courts. And here's why. Somebody would, you know, 150 years ago, deeded land to the railroad. They said, we're going to give the railroad 50 feet for railroad purposes. Okay, so the, the question, the legal question that came up is, when the railroad stopped using the railroad right away, could the railroad give it to the people that ran the trails? Or did it revert back to the original landowner? That's called what we call reversionary rights. Who does the right-of-way go back to or an easement go back to when it stops being used by the easement holder. And so this question of whether or not that the railroad right away was actually conveyed in, conveyed in fee or as an easement became really important. If it was conveyed in fee, then the railroad had a right to give it to the trail people. Okay, give it to the trail program. If it was the railroad right away is conveyed as an easement and they had the language in there for railroad purposes, then the private landowners had an argument that when the railroad stopped using it, that that land reverted back to their ownership. So it was an interesting question. It went to the Supreme Court of a couple different states, and I'm not, I can't remember. I think, um, in fact, I think probably depending on what state you were in, the answer to that question could be different what the court decided. So you can't just see right away and say right away if you're a surveyor and think that's good enough. It's not. You need to understand is that right away held in a fee or as an easement? Okay, same thing if you're doing a land title survey, you need to know where do you show the outside line of the property? Is it to the center of the right of way? Or is it to the sideline? That answer is going to change depending on whether or not the right of way is held as a fee or as an easement. So you need to think about that. All right, guys, I hope this video helped. We'll do some more videos about easements and fee ownership, and uh, we'll talk. We'll get a we'll get a little more in, in depth. But hopefully, this was a good introduction for you guys.